right through it. Joining me now is the New South Wales Liberal Senator, Holly Hughes. Thanks for joining us, Holly, as we kick off uh, this year. Are you concerned? I think there's a lot of fear-mongering uh, in this country. I'm not going to pin it all on, mm. on Mark Butler there from the Labor Party. We've seen a lot of it from Liberal politicians as well. And God knows we've seen nothing but hysteria and fear-mongering from large elements of the media. Do you think that there's any sign we're going to see any let-up in this before the election? Sure. I hope so. I think it's time we do. I think if you speak to most everyday Australians, they're getting very much to the end of their tether with what's happening. If you look at what happened in National Cabinet today, all of the states recognised uh, that their hospitals are becoming under less and less pressure as this Omicron wave passes. Uh, of course, in WA, we're not seeing that because they're too scared to let it in and their hospitals are not in any way prepared to cope. But elsewhere, we're seeing that hospital, the pressure is easing. Uh, we're also looking at things at National Cabinet today that were agreed around trucking licences, that these things become more easy to achieve so that we can keep those supply chains open. I do think overwhelmingly, though, Australians are getting to the point where that enough is enough. They're triple vaxxed, they're ready to go, they're starting to see that things can open up, open up safely, and their friends and family, if not themselves, that have got COVID, the vast majority of people have had sort of a cold slash flu kind of symptom for a couple of days. I just listened to Mark Butler. He doesn't talk about 2017 when we had 7,000 people in hospital with the flu. I saw a statistic the other day, 23 people in New South Wales died of COVID, 139 people died of cancer. And how many more are we going to see dying of diseases like cancer who can't access the health system because of this obsessive fear-mongering around COVID. Yeah, we've just got to be much more pragmatic about it as we move through this year. Now, I just want to raise some other political issues uh, with you, uh, Holly Hughes. Uh, one is uh, there's been a bit of publicity around Allegra Spender, the Voices so-called independent climate candidate in Wentworth, about when she was running Carla Zampatti's, uh, uh, the late Z Carla Zampatti's uh, uh, um, fashion company, that it actually didn't meet uh, some federal gender disclosure, women's disclosure laws. Is this, is this a bit of a political hit, a little bit of dirty tricks to uh, undermine Allegra? Look, I don't think so. I think what it shows, though, it's very easy to talk the talk, not so easy to walk the walk. And if you look at these voices of candidates, I mean, I look at them and I honestly, I worry for people that think they're a great idea. Most of them are single issue. Allegra seems to have two issues. One is a women's advocate, which clearly she's unable to uh, walk the walk on that issue, as we've seen today, but climate change. And can I tell you, you know, Chris, and you know this having worked in federal parliament, there's a lot more issues than we have to deal with. There's a lot more issues affecting Australian families than climate change and women's issues, to be fair. Uh, there's plenty of other issues you have to deal with as a federal parliamentarian. Yet these voices of groups seem to be focused on single issue and that's it. Now, I've got to uh, go to your social media uh, uh, um, postings here, Senator, because... Oh, I'm sure I, my staff will be thrilled. <laughs> I, I was taken by the way you compared a tweet from Hillary Clinton going back, uh, oh, going back about five or six years to one uh, this year from Anthony Albanese. Uh, Hillary Clinton tweets, it's a, it's a simple but powerful idea. We are fairer together. We are better together. We are stronger together. Albo says, we'll govern with the belief that we are stronger stronger together, more resilient together, better together. Is this plagiarism or is together a pretty common word? Well, look, you know, I don't want to be accused of plagiarism because I actually got that from the Liberal Party headquarters that put out that uh, graphic, which I thought was particularly good. So that's why I shared it. So I won't be accused of plagiarism alone that I didn't put it all together. But I think it shows each way elbow. I mean, this guy is running not only a small target campaign, it's a no target campaign. Have you ever seen anyone who's purporting to be an alternative prime minister with so little to say? I mean, he's just running away from anything that he can be criticised on. Uh, everything that he's proposing, if you actually have a look at some of his latest efforts, are actually all state responsibilities. So if you really want to go through my socials, I did ask last right. week that someone hand Albo a copy of the Constitution.
Well, it's early days yet. We'll give him uh, plenty of time to get some policy out, but I don't think he's going to be running with a carbon tax or uh, a pensioners tax or any of the stuff they ran with last time. Thanks so much for well, joining us, Well, we don't Senator. know. $387 billion of taxes they had last well, year. Last that was last time. We'll find out. And they haven't come back with anything different. We'll push on and find out uh, from Labor, in fact, uh, coming up in the program. Thanks for joining us, Senator. Thanks, Chris.